There was a time when I felt like a duck out of water, but I kept trying to swim even though it was against my own natural tendencies. I'm talking about being an introvert in a very extroverted industry, hospitality. While it took me many years to crack the code and figure out how I could fit in and thrive, now I have a strategy and tips that help me play on my strength when I'm connecting with clients and colleagues. If you're an introvert like me, you're going to want to stick around for this one. Hey everyone, it's Leanne and I am an introvert. It feels a little bit like a confession, but I'm an introvert in a very extroverted industry. And it took me a long time to be able to say that out loud. At first, I thought I could do it. I thought I could do all of the long networking receptions, um, the week-long conferences, some of them overseas. And then as I started to get more and more exhausted, I thought maybe it was a sign that I was getting older. But in reality, all it was is I just needed some alone time to recharge my batteries. And often in our industry, we lack those opportunities. So I created a different kind of battle plan. One that helps me stay energized and stay authentically true to who it is I am while still connecting with my community and my clients. So this week's tips, they're all for introverts in the hospitality industry looking to create and expand their communities while staying true and authentic to who it is they are. Before we look at these ideas, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on that little bell to be notified of new content. I create content around personal branding for hospitality professionals each week, and I don't want you to miss a thing. Now let's look at those tips to help us introverts thrive in our extroverted industry. Tip number one, if you're working in a sales capacity, consider meeting your clients first online. Social media platforms are a great way to learn about people and create warm connections with your clients prior to meeting them in person. And then when you finally do meet them face to face, the introduction is easier because you've already connected online. Consider connecting with your client on LinkedIn. And if you need tips on how best to do that, I have a video that can help you out right here. Tip number two, pre-event networking. Now this is one of my favorite ideas. It's when you gather with a small group of individuals prior to the larger networking events. It, better yet, if you can partner with other introverts, then you can walk into that networking together as partners. Meeting in these smaller groups before the larger event will help you break the ice and it gives you opportunity to have deeper conversations about perhaps what happened earlier that day. Tip number three, consider making your introversion part of your personal brand, similar to what I did. Chances are, if you share your love of small groups and good conversation, you will attract other like-minded people to your brand. Showcase this part of your personality as a way to connect with your clients and your target audience. Tip number four, ask an introverted friend to help you make some introductions at the larger networking event. This will take some of the pressure off trying to make those awkward introductions when you have an extroverted friend that would love to do that for you. Try walking into those networking events with a colleague and together you can meet individuals and groups. Tip number five, consider video for content creation. I know this sounds counterintuitive, but being an introvert doesn't necessarily mean that you're shy or that you're afraid of the camera. I'm maybe a good example of that. Consider filming some of your social media content to help put your face out there without the pressure of being in a large group. Tip number six, consider podcasting. In the same way that video can be a solo activity, so can creating a podcast when you're quite literally talking to yourself or maybe one-on-one -on -one interviews. So if audio is a great way for you to connect with your customers, consider starting a podcast or an audio series. Tip number seven, consider writing a blog. Again, writing is a solo activity. So if your target audience is looking for the written word, this is a great way for you to amplify your personal brand. Tip number eight, conduct one-on-one -on -one interviews as part of your content creation. 
Again, this takes the pressure off of being in large group. So start small and make content with one other individual to get comfortable with interacting with others in your content. Tip number nine, arm yourself with a few conversation starters for networking events. And if you'll indulge me, consider going past the how was your day or how was your flight questions and dig a little deeper. For example, why did you choose this particular event or venue or destination or conference? And what do you like better about this conference as opposed to other ones you attend? And my favorite, did you have time to explore the city before you had to start the conference? Tip number 10, listen more and talk less when you're interacting with your clients. By listening versus talking, you'll pick up on the cues to launch into additional questions for your conversation partner. Allow your partner to take the spotlight. They'll appreciate the attention and you'll brand yourself as someone who cares and someone who can be trusted. Tip number 11, rethink the after party at networking events. If you don't want to party at the loud bar after the networking event, invite some close to you to join you for a post networking event cocktail or coffee at the hotel lobby lounge. Wind down with good conversation, call it a night early. You'll be primed for a better tomorrow versus those that stayed out all night partying. Tip number 12, don't forget about the morning networking. For all of you who did retire early the night before, now you're primed and ready for a day of learning. Connect with those over a cup of coffee and start your day on the right foot with some great conversation. Tip 13, don't forget about your post-conference wind down routine. Whether you're returning home from a week-long conference or just returning from a busy night of networking, introverts can become exhausted from these activities. So ensure you build in some downtime after your events to unwind and get back to equilibrium. It could be a spa day, a couple of hours with a good book, even just a good night's rest or quality time with family. Purposefully schedule time in your calendar to replenish your energy. And tip 14, and most importantly, be yourself. Authenticity is key when it comes to personal branding. Trying to be an extrovert or mirror the industry you are in will only exhaust you and create a brand persona that contradicts your true nature. Your brand will attract people based on your authenticity. So stay true to who it is that you are. Another great way to interact with others as an introvert is through social media communities. And I have a Facebook page that I invite you to join. We talk about all things personal branding and social media content over on my Facebook page. Whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, there's room for all of us in the hospitality industry. We may recharge our batteries in different ways, but the end goal is the same, and that is to be of service to our clients and customers. You can do that through being your authentic self. And I do hope to see your authentic self at a networking event soon. Thanks for watching today's video. Bye for now.